Hello everyone, this is Axel Paxel back with another tutorial and this time we will be focusing on the bass. So here I've actually uh, found uh, a cork bass. I perched, uh, I found it in a pet store. Uh, they gave, basically gave me this uh, away for free. And uh, it's a lightweight product that you can break off. Uh, I think it's actually used to plant some seeds in uh, or something like that. You can find uh, stuff like this out uh, in, the, in nature as well. Um, some bark uh, from a tree perhaps that you could glue together or you could, um, uh, Ikea actually has some sort of like uh, cork material for uh, stuff that goes under hot pants and you can break off that and uh, create some something uh, you would like to use as, uh, as a base. So here I'm uh, going outside to the local playground and uh, just uh, finding some uh, some dirt basically. Uh, what's nice about this is that the corns, uh, the sand corns, uh, are of different sizes. And uh, if you were to purchase this in a store, which you can do, all the sand pebbles tend to be the same size. So that doesn't work quite as nice because you want a different, you want different texture to the, um, uh, to the, to the sand that you actually put onto the base as well. So here I have uh, uh, pulled out some uh, some uh, PVA glue, and I just apply this on different spots uh, on the uh, on the base. Uh, this is basically where I want the the green parts of the base uh, to be, like where uh, it's gonna simulate grass grass growing in these places. So the other parts will be uh, painted with uh, as a, a stone. You can see here the, the parts that I've um, uh, put glue on, PVA glue on, is the parts that, uh, that are uh, green. So I'm just applying this in some random, well, not that random places, but if you make a mis, there's actually no mistake here. You can just put on your glue wherever you want the grass to be, and uh, yeah, just proceed from there. I'm using this straight out of the box, as you can see. Uh, this is the picture uh, after I have applied the uh, mud slime effect. Uh, that I will uh, also in, have included in this uh, video. If you want to skip right to that part, uh, you can uh, you can do so. It's around the 50, uh, 50 minute mark, I think. I should also uh, call out my newest uh, Patreon member, uh, supporter, uh, Alex. Thank you so much for uh, supporting me. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, you will uh, find your uh, uh, place uh, amongst my uh, supporters, and uh, I hope uh, my videos will be of uh, some use to you. Okay, so uh, after applying the PVA glue, um, you can see that I'm just drizzling over some, uh, some sand corns. Um, just putting it on, putting it on there, uh, onto the glue parts. And then you can just wait for a couple of minutes, like maybe six, seven minutes, and um, uh, you will be ready to do the next step. <laughs> I actually uh, had not used my PVA glue for like two months or so, so uh, glue was actually stuck to the uh, to the bottle nose of the of the glue, and, and I had sp to spend like ten minutes uh, <laughs> getting it uh, getting it off. Uh, not included in the video, of course. Okay, so here um, uh, this is uh, this part is done to seal in the sand so that it doesn't fall off the model. So this is basically water mixed with PVA glue. 
uh, on a ratio of uh, one part water, one part uh, PVA glue. So it's uh, it's very thin. And I'm of course <laughs> using a dirty old uh, brush that I don't care about. These brushes are you can get for like one dollar at uh, at my local store at least. Um, so I'm I don't care about them at all. If I destroy them, which I actually will do end up doing in in this video, I will destroy one of my uh, my dirty old brushes. Um, uh, yeah, it's no problem. You can always buy a new one, but don't use your normal brushes for this as you will completely ruin the bristles because you're working with uh, glue. So here I've got the mixture ready and uh, it's been a couple of minutes. I'm a bit impatient here, so I just uh, think my thought process here was just, okay, I'm just gonna attempt it. Uh, you can actually see some uh, uh, yellow spots uh, on the on the base as well. That is uh, um, milliput standard. It's optional. I've used this in order to seal in some places. It's uh, an epoxy putty, uh, but you don't have to use that on your uh, base. Um, but by using that, you can uh, change the shape of the base. Okay, so now I'm um, just gently tapping the the water watered down glue onto the same spots that uh, I recently um, had sand on, and you can see the sta the sand is is stuck on it, and um, yeah, so this will just uh, seal in the uh, sand corns. This is important to do because if you don't do this and simply paint over it with a brush uh, without sealing it, uh, you will um, uh, sand corns will get loose uh, when as you're painting it, especially if you're dry brushing it, which I intend to do. Working with bases is actually kind of uh, interesting. Um, it's fun when you see the results, uh, but you have to do uh, things in a certain order when it comes to uh, bases. Like I wouldn't prime this, uh, this cork base before I actually mm -hmm. do uh, these parts um, because then I would have to prime it again and that just takes time. So, um, yeah, uh, and like now, uh, this glue has to set uh, before I apply the um, before I apply the uh, the priming uh, to the model to the base, and that will spend some time setting because you've added water, so uh, it sets uh, it sets kind of slow, maybe one and a half hour, 90 minutes perhaps. So this uh, is after the glue has uh, set. You can see that it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not white anymore. Here I've attached uh, the model to the, to the base uh, and I've also primed the base. I didn't, I didn't want to show you guys uh, the priming of the base because this, that is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I just went outside and primed it, uh, and then I uh, put uh, and I glued the the model uh, down. Normally, I would pin the model to the ground, uh, to the base. Uh, I, that was not necessary here because I'm gonna add uh, that thick, gooey uh, mud, which is based on glue. Uh, so um, that will keep it firm in, in, in place. So now I'm going to be going over the uh, rock portions of, uh, of the base using uh, three colors. Uh, it's the same colors that I used for uh, going over the chest piece. Uh, model color black uh, from Vallejo. Um, 
which is what I'm working with now. Uh, and that is uh, white. You can use any white. I'm using uh, Primacryl Titanium White from uh, Schminke. And then I add a little bit of uh, blue uh, just to add that cold look to the, to the stone. You can see that this is a rather dark mix. Uh, uh, you want it to be, be dark and then go lighter um, afterwards uh, as you apply the dry brush. Now I'm using my go-to mixing uh, brush, the dirty old uh, brush that's uh, not used for uh, much else, uh, but I'm actually using it for, uh, for painting over the base color the, uh, onto, the, onto the base. You don't have to do that uh, detailed at all, so um, you can just uh, apply this in, in the way you feel uh, comfortable doing it uh, with the with any brush you'd like, actually. This is um, a rather uh, thick brush, large size. So uh, by using this brush, it goes faster than if I were to use uh, like, a, like a one or a double zero or something like that. So now I'm just reassessing uh, my thinking process there is uh, to get the right color and uh, yeah it looks looks fine actually right now it <laughs> the base look uh, like uh, some charred ashen piece like some burnt piece of something um, but it will it will come together as I apply the the uh, the uh, dry brush just uh, setting the light a little bit differently so that you can actually see the color because it's so dark I have to set the light setting to um, like really <laughs> bright um, that's just so you can see the uh, the color as I paint it onto the base Uh, when you do this, uh, when you apply this stage, uh, you don't have to go over uh, all the stone parts. Uh, keeping some of the recesses black will actually uh, give more depth to the to the base. So, um, yeah, you should definitely definitely do that. And it's all about contrasts. When you look at a stone, actually, in, uh, in nature, it has uh, lots of uh, different colors. Um, so uh, you could go uh, and, and use, with the dry brush, of course, uh, use, uh, use a lot of different uh, colors to, to give the stone more, uh, more interest. But uh, keep in mind that uh, the main focal point of the uh, the miniature should uh, <laughs> should be the miniature and not the, not the base unless you're creating a diorama or uh, something like that. So um, but uh, on this model I want the base to be uh, uh, a focal point as, uh, as well. So you can see that I'm just applying it rather fast, and um, yeah, if you if you go over some parts that you don't like, just just keep on going actually, because uh, there's not that much that can go wrong here unless you actually uh, paint a thick coat of blue onto the model itself <laughs> then you would have to uh, of course go back and redo that but uh, as long as you accidentally just paint your base then uh, in, in certain spots it's it's no problem you 
getting a base to look uh, really nice actually takes uh, about a fifth of the time as painting the miniature so uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, everyone put at least some time into doing their bases because uh, the the overall look of the model uh, is going is going to enhance it it's going to enhance the, the whole look of the model So here I'm uh, mixing in a highlight color. Um, just uh, using the same base color and um, and adding more white to it, essentially. So right now I'm, uh, I think I'm getting out my uh, dry brush, yeah. I felt uh, very manly going and uh, going into. Uh, uh, I would call it a female store, <laughs> and buying a makeup brush. Um, the thing about makeup brushes is that they're uh, assigned uh, designed to use on your face, so it has much softer uh, bristles than when compared to uh, another uh, like paintbrush. So. That makes it uh, perfect for a dry brush because you want as, as, uh, a small amount of paint left onto the model itself. So you can see how many times I actually wiped the paint off the, uh, off the brush. Uh, and this gives me more control because less paint is being left onto the model. Here I may have done it a little bit too many times, as you can see that very little paint is actually uh, being left onto the onto the um, the base. So I'm not pushing the brush very hard against the the base here. I just gently go near it with the brush. If I were to push down um, the the brush onto the onto the base, it would leave a, a stronger mark. So here you can actually see how fast dry brushing works when used uh, against uh, texture. It's just like maybe two three strokes, and you instantly get a nice uh, stony uh, look. And this goes so much faster than if you were to do edge highlighting, which honestly would not look that great. And it would take so much longer. So this is uh, one of the um, uh, key uh, spots to, to use a, a dry brush. You have to wipe your uh, brush uh, on some uh, on some paper towel bef or paper uh, toilet paper uh, before you apply the paint to, to the model because if you don't, then you will leave uh, too much paint uh, onto the model and you will have to repaint it with the uh, base uh, coat. So uh, now I'm uh, just doing the same stuff, basically going around the whole side of the of the base. Um, I'm sorry that the uh, background is so bright. Uh, I have to keep it at that setting in order for you to see the uh, the paint that I'm putting uh, putting down. Uh, So what you want for um, for the material uh, that you can use as uh, as a cork uh, cork base? Well, it's basically cork material. You can buy it off uh, hobby shops. Um, 
IKEA, like I mentioned, they have those uh, those heating pan those heating plates uh, that allows you to put hot pans on top of it. And you can also go into nature and find some bark. Uh, you can also break off uh, stuff and uh, and uh, glue it on top of uh, each other so that you get a height uh, difference onto your base as well. And um, it will look a little bit weird before you prime it, but once you prime it and you start going over those spots with uh, the same colors, it will all uh, mesh very well together. Uh, so now I'm uh, mixing in uh, an even brighter, um, <laughs> you can actually not s almost see it on the on the palette there, but uh, it is a lighter color. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I used the same uh, um, highlight color and just added more white to it in order to create a new color. So here I've, uh, I'm resetting the camera a little bit so that you can actually um, see how much of a difference this uh, this makes now i'm using the 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 brightest uh, highlight uh, tone but it's not white uh, at all as you will see when i uh, paint it onto the actually <laughs> you now you can see that it's not white it's like a light gray but when applied to the model it will appear white because of the contrast going from black to dark uh, gray to uh, lighter gray and to to this uh, off-white gray that I'm applying now. And you can see that it's really starting to look like um, stones. And it goes so fast. Which is uh, which is nice when it comes when it comes to miniature painting, you can spend a long time doing um, detail uh, work, uh, and that's that's one of the fun parts about making a base. It goes uh, rather uh, fast once you get uh, once once you start to dry brush. So yeah, I should mention the few uh, or the uh, benefits you actually get from becoming one of my Patreon um, uh, supporters. Uh, you get early access to all my videos. Um, they will be released uh, free to watch, but uh, you will get to watch them before they are uh, publicly released, one week before at least. And uh, you also get uh, a thank you uh, by the end of the video. I thank all my first 10 supporters. Um, it's only one dollar. Uh, I need to get my page going. So, uh, so um, yeah, for the first 10 supporters, uh, there are six spots left as of now. Uh, you get um, yeah early access. Uh, you also get personal uh, feedback on your own painting process, uh, whether that is the dung beetle or if it's another model. I can give you some points and tips uh, to ask uh, to how to uh, as to how to improve it. Um, yeah. And there's also another benefit, uh, which I, no, I covered all three actually. Yeah. And once we get a lot more members, uh, it will be a form of a community. Uh, that is at least my intention. So you, yeah, everyone will uh, be able to uh, talk with one another and uh, give feedback on, uh, on uh, different paint jobs and stuff. All right, so uh, back to the model here. Uh, I think I'm actually trying to mix up my uh, my uh, green color. This is uh, <laughs> a bit embarrassing, but um, I don't actually have a green color. So uh, I have to make it. 
Uh, if you were to look at my painting cabinet, I have uh, maybe, I think I have like 20 paints. And that's not a lot, but you can always mix colors together to get what you want, like I do here. Uh, right now I'm mixing uh, aerial yellow uh, with um, uh, model uh, color light turquoise, uh, which is the blue color. You mix uh, yellow and uh, and um, blue, you get green. And uh, this is a bit of a too, too bright green. So what I do is that I add uh, black to it in order to darken it. The nice uh, about like creating your own colors like this is that you, you get exactly the color that you actually uh, want. The bad part of it is that if you're really satisfied with a color, you, you will probably never be able to replicate it to uh, like 100% because you're mixing uh, colors and uh, yeah. So now what's happening on the wet palette is actually quite interesting. I pull, I've, um, I've caused a rift in the, um, in the um, I guess you can call it baking paper, which I use. Uh, so paint is starting to bleed into the water uh, below uh, and that causes of course water to go up into the paint as well so it becomes very uh, runny so uh, if that happens you just have to uh, create the color uh, again so uh, yeah I make a lot of mistakes as well but uh, <laughs> You can always go back and uh, and uh, fix them. This is no big issue. I of course have to as as I keep progressing painting, the paint will start to bleed all over into the wet palette. So uh, yeah, this wet palette is actually is going to be destroyed in a couple of uh, um, uh, like an hour or something. So I'm testing out the color. Uh, it's a little bit too light and too too blue, I think. I think I have to tone it uh, more towards the warm side. So I'm adding a little bit more uh, aerial uh, yellow to it. I did own a green color. Uh, but the paint uh, dried uh, on the bottleneck uh, and one time I squeezed it and <laughs> I squeezed it so hard because no paint was actually leaving the bottle and then uh, the whole bottle just the came loose <laughs> uh, like in the neck part there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of plastic that keeps it retained that plastic bit loosened and I, I had paint all over my uh, wet palette. There was like half the bottle going into my wet palette. Uh, a bit frustrating, but uh, yeah, I didn't film that. I would show it to you because uh, it, it was a bit funny, but uh, yeah, I hadn't started recording uh, when, uh, when that happened. It didn't happen now, it happened like a month ago or so. Uh, so now I'm uh, hitting the uh, the uh, portions where I had the sand. Mm. And you can see that I'm not using a fine brush for this. I'm using my, my mixing brush, which is perfectly fine. This is not a detail, uh, high in detail work. So uh, I'm just applying it exactly where uh, I put the sand. In future videos, I may add some background music. I don't know if people would like that. I may guess it. Some people do, and some some people don't. But uh, um, 
I'm going to listen to what my uh, patrons um, uh, support me in doing. So if uh, if you guys want uh, some background music on uh, on my videos, uh, I can uh, I can add that. No problem. I'm thinking maybe like some sort of uh, like low key uh, classical piano. Um, yeah, something like that's not something like metal or something. So now I'm uh, I'm uh, mixing in uh, some um, a lighter uh, green tone. Uh, but if I simply were to use uh, the green tone that I had created and adding white, it would only look desaturated and it would not look very nice at all. So I have to add um, some more. Uh, yellow into the mix and this is a dry brush so I'm only hitting the the um, the texture the protruding parts of the sand uh, the sand corns uh, that are standing out if you will and um, What's important to to keep in mind about dry brushing is that you you put paint on your brush. It can be like a kind of like a thick consistency. You don't need to mix in, or actually you shouldn't mix in water. And if you do, you shouldn't add much. But what's important is that you uh, take much of the paint out of the brush before you apply it. So here I'm. I'm putting my brush into the into the mix and then I'm wiping it off afterwards and then I I apply um, I don't push down the brush onto the model I'm, I'm just gracing the higher points of the of uh, of the texture and what this will do is uh, is that uh, it will give uh, it will give the grass some uh, some fair bit of texture that looks uh, very nice and it's not all the same color anymore so it looks more uh, real so now i'm uh, mixing in uh, an even uh, more uh, yellow tone to the to the grass In each of these steps, I'm using the original uh, green color that I created, and uh, I just put in more uh, more aerial yellow into into that mix as I uh, proceed. And again, only hitting the highest points. When I went over with the first uh, with the first base coat. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do the same uh, movements with my brush. I just painted it on there, uh, and I tried to hit all the recesses. That's not what you're doing now. You're trying to only hit the protruding parts, the 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 parts that stand out from from the sand. So now I'm mixing in the <laughs> the final color. Here I added. Um, I used the the that color, the, uh, and I just added the brightest color, and then I added more white to it. This will be the final highlight uh, color. And since it's so bright, you have to brush off more of the paint because it will leave a really strong mark if you don't. And I'm I'm applying it very gently. As you keep on dry brushing, you will notice that more and more paint leaves the brush, so you can be a, a little bit less careful. But the first time uh, you you uh, you start a dry brush after having had paint on it, you got to be careful because you don't actually know how much paint is being left into the model. 
uh, left onto the model when when you hit the uh, hit the model with your uh, with your brush. So now it's starting to actually uh, come together uh, really nice. Um, The stone parts look like stone and the grass look like grass. You could, of course, add some um, some flock uh, or uh, some static grass onto the model uh, as well. Uh, this will only enhance the enhance the look. Uh, I decided not to do that uh, here. Here I'm uh, uh, re-highlighting some uh, some of the stone parts, which I want a little bit brighter. And also the parts of the stone that are um, that are flat by going over some of the lines. If you've seen enough of this part uh, and you got it down, you can uh, jump to the uh, 40, 45 minute mark. And uh, that will be all about the uh, sticky, uh, the sticky mud base uh, effect. I'm basically done with this part now. I just have to, it's just like small details here and there. Um, you don't have to do this part, but uh, enhancing some parts will make it look uh, better perhaps, but uh, yeah, it's optional. It looks fine by now, to be honest. So uh, this part is about um, going over the uh, the slime. Uh, no, not the slime. The mud effect that goes uh, on the uh, in the hole in the ground. So uh, this is um, a technical paint from Games Workshop. It's called Blood for for the Blood God, I think. Uh, and I mix in a little bit of uh, black in order to create a. Um, a brown color. Uh, the thing about the blood for the blood god is that it's kind of like a sticky and it looks a little bit um, glossy. Uh, that's why I'm using that. You could use a, a red uh, color as well. But the most important part when it comes to creating um, the string like effect uh, is that you add a glue. Um, that has the right properties. I'm using Ufu Heart Special Glue um, and this works perfect for this uh, this kind of work. Um, just be careful when you when you mix this together you don't use your brush because you will uh, completely ruin it. You can see the consistency as I work with it there. Uh, it's kind of like stringy already and it sets very fast, um, so it's uh, on a ratio. I think this is like one part glue, one part paint, and uh, and I just jab it on there. It's so dark that you actually can't see it all that well, but I will uh, um, add some more uh, light to the uh, to the video so that you can actually see it uh, being applied. I'm just uh, trying to put it down where I want it, and I want it down into the uh, hole, uh, covering the. You can, s yeah, you c could see a little bit there how stringy it uh, it becomes, and it becomes so very fast. So you have to work kind of fast with this one. <laughs> uh, 
and obviously once you put this down <laughs> there's no going back <laughs> it's glue so um, yeah Here I actually made the, the mistake of using one of my dirty old uh, brushes, not my favorite mixing brush, the one you, <laughs> you always see me using, uh, but uh, another another brush. Um, I accidentally put that brush and mixed in some more color. Um, and by then you already ruined your uh, brush because you've, uh, you've gotten glue on it. I could have perhaps salvaged it by uh, stopping the video and uh, trying to to save it, but it's a one dollar brush, so uh, yeah, I didn't care about it that much. Uh, so yeah, uh, here I'm just mixing in some more of the of the color. Don't use a wet palette for this because uh, you don't want water to enter into the paint. Uh, use some sort of material where the paint will not be absorbed by the mat material that you put it on. Right now I'm using uh, the front side of um, um, cheese product. It's plastic basically. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just mixing uh, black with uh, blood for the blood god. to make it into a uh, very brown looking uh, uh, mud. And then I add the, the glue. I add quite a bit, as you can see. The nice thing about this uh, particular uh, glue is that it sets very fast and it becomes uh, very stringy-like. Um, yeah, Harry can see that I, <laughs> I'm uh, destroying my brush. I accidentally used my brush for this. Don't do that. And of course, I realized my mistake once I. <laughs> well, yeah. Just don't use your main painting brushes for that. So you can see how stringy that is. It's almost like caramel. Um, and I'm just applying it, leaving it down into the, uh, the hole. You got to be careful not to hit the, the model in places where you don't want that glue to be. Like I did there almost. This is somewhat hard to work with because it's so uh, stringy and you can't touch it because it's very sticky. Uh, I'm using um, toothpicks actually and they work great for this because you can just throw them out. They cost like nothing and um, yeah. Just putting down more of the glue, blue and color, blue, the glue mix down. And I'm trying to add some texture to the uh, mud as well. Keeping in mind that this is a dung beetle and uh, dung beetles out in nature, they actually, um, push their own poop around uh, like in a dung ball. Uh, so I wanted this model to uh, be somewhat dirty uh, looking at least in the lower uh, portion and that goes nice with the overall uh, theme of Kingdom Death and also what this uh, creature is actually 
uh, an imitation of one that's, that is a dung beetle, of course. So the, the hole is uh, somewhat filled in right now. Um, starting to look uh, quite nice and of course I'm out of uh, <laughs> mixture again um, so I have to create uh, a new soon the final part of my glue work is uh, is uh, not um, recorded as my uh, you, you can see me make those strings uh, which I guess it's a, an important uh, part to to see but I also added uh, some other strings uh, to the bones as well which I did not record because I ran out of battery uh, but what I did there was lighten up some of those strings by adding a little bit of uh, white to the mixture as well. Um, because uh, the strings were kind of dark and uh, they weren't that visible. Uh, so in order to make them a little bit more visible, uh, I added uh, some white and uh, I created some more strings, which unfortunately did not make the video, but uh, you can still see in essence um, how I do that, uh, create those strings, and um, you should be fine in uh, creating your, your own. I should mention that uh, these, um, this effect works great for uh, blood as well. Uh, just don't mix in uh, some, so much uh, black and it will actually appear more like the color of, uh, of blood. And uh, that <clears throat> I have done that on one of my other uh, models, like the Butcher's uh, Cleaver from Kingdom Death, uh, which uh, turned out very nice. Um, so yeah, you can just play around with uh, with this uh, in any way you you like. You could, for instance, create slime by uh, using a green color and adding uh, this uh, glue uh, to it. Um, so that would work nice as well, and I'm I'm going to do that next on my next model, which is actually a commission piece uh, that I've uh, accepted. Um, it's going to be the Sunstalker from uh, Kingdom Death, and it's also going to include some nice uh, freehand, I think. But uh, yeah, back to the model. I'm uh, I'm uh, mixing some more of the. Uh, the glue mix by using red quite a lot of red actually um, you don't have to mix in that much black like one one drop per five six drops of of uh, red uh, is sufficient if you t if you use too much black it will uh, only make the uh, mud appear darker so it's no problem but if you want it a little bit more visible you should uh, not perhaps use that much black Adding a bit more of the uh, glue. And unfortunately that appears to be... No, I'm actually... This is, uh, this is interesting because now I'm going to be creating the strings. And uh, this is actually the hardest part uh, because working with this stringy glue is kind of finicky, which means you you don't have a great deal of control over it. Um, 
so I will attempt my best to do this while I'm recording, which is kind of difficult, as I have to use both my uh, my hands. So I'm with two uh, two toothpicks. One part is used to hold down the glue, pushing it down to the base, and the other toothpick is used to drag the glue onto the parts of the model that I want it uh, want the strings to be. So uh, now I'm just uh, uh, setting it up and um, yeah. Once you start to do this, there's uh, difficult to go back because you're going, uh, you're, you're using glue. Um, but just try your best. I haven't done this that many times, so you don't have to be like an expert uh, when, when doing this. Just try to be uh, careful not to smear uh, too much glue onto the model, as it will be harder, hard to, to go back from that. And remember, have fun while you do this as well. <laughs> this, uh, this should be fun as well. And I'm having lots of fun when I, when I do this, because you can see results so fast. Okay, so one toothpick is holding down the glue. The other part is trying to string it up. Having spots that your uh, toothpicks can, or the glue actually can hold onto is nice because it's easier to get it to, to stick. So here I'm adding some more. You can see that it's uh, somewhat difficult to, to work with. It breaks off uh, multiple times. like there. Don't despair. Um, just keep working with the glue and it will eventually, hopefully, uh, go in the place that, that you want. There, finally. <laughs> Finally, I got that part. So yeah, that's uh, that's how you create the uh, string-like uh, uh, effects with the uh, with the mud. Um, right now, it the model appears very bright, but that's because uh, I wanted uh, I wanted you guys to see what was actually going on going on in the in the mud. Um, here I accidentally smeared some uh, some glue onto the uh, lower portion of his uh, <laughs> what do you call it <laughs> the protruding thing between his legs um, yeah I made a little bit of a mess here, to be honest, but uh, well, it's mud and uh, he has just been in it. So uh, <laughs> he can always say that uh, it's, uh, it adds to the uh, artistic flavor of the, of the model. Um, so yeah, I guess that's starting to look quite nice now actually it's still a little bit dark so uh, I go over with uh, some uh, some brighter uh, uh, glue a, a brighter glue mix uh, which has less black in it and a little bit of white um, and that uh, that will uh, a pair quite nice actually because it will 
if you look at mud, mud also has different uh, color tones to it. So actually having more color, more than one color tone to the glue mix actually adds uh, interest to the model. So uh, here I'm uh, adding some, some uh, uh, mud to the base as well. Right now you can see that the consistency of the mud is starting to become very hard to work with and that is because uh, the uh, glue has been sitting in the paint mix uh, for a little bit too long. Here I'm trying to go over the uh, the lower portion of the uh, the glue work. Um, so yeah, that's starting to become uh, look quite nice. Um, it's coming uh, near towards the end of the video, uh, so thank you if you actually uh, watched uh, these parts. Um, it would really help me if you if you shared the video uh, across different media, um, like, subscribe, and if you really want to support me, you can uh, you can uh, be one of my patrons. Uh, link will be in the description uh, on YouTube. Uh, once it's uh, publicly there. Uh, and if you are one of my uh, patrons, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for your support. It allows me to continue making uh, projects like, uh, like this, which take quite a bit of time. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, here you can see uh, the Dung Beetle Knight with the glue work, uh, with colors that are, uh, or with brightness that is toned down.